Hi everyone, Kevin here. It's official, Microsoft is releasing the next version of Windows and it's gonna be called Windows 11. We're gonna look at all of the biggest announcements from today's Microsoft event and I'll also share my perspective on things. But first, what happened? Windows 10 was supposed to be the last version of Windows and Microsoft was just supposed to release periodic updates to Windows 10. Well, when we look at PC sales over the last 10 to 12 years, PC sales have been on the decline. And then the pandemic hit, and for whatever reason, everyone decided to go out and refresh their PCs. And I think Microsoft saw all that increased growth and interest in PCs, and they had a change of heart. All right, well, let's jump in and let's take a look at what some of the biggest announcements were. The first biggest change is there's a new start menu. At the very top, you have your pinned apps, and then you also have recommendations down at the bottom. The entire start menu is also cloud powered. So that means if you go on to a different device, you'll have the same start menu. So what am I most excited about? Well, I think new, the new recommended section really has the potential to be a game changer. Let's say you just worked on a document or maybe you're iterating on a document, it'll recommend it to you to make it quicker and easier to get back to. All in all, I think on Windows 10, the start menu had somewhat lost some relevance, and I think Windows 11 tries to give it a renewed purpose. Next, the look and feel has also gone through some substantial changes. You'll notice transparency under the windows. You have rounded corners for your various windows. Also, the transitions are a little bit smoother. Overall, it just feels like a more polished product. Windows 11 also introduces a batch of new themes. So if you want a light theme, well, there's a theme for that. If you want a dark theme, well, there's also a dark theme and there are many other themes that you can choose from. So you can truly customize what your Windows 11 looks like. Windows 11 also makes improvements over snapping. And on Windows 10, you've been able to snap. You could position a window wherever you wanted, but with Windows 11, you get these helpful hints that tell you where a window is going to snap. And there's also a new concept of snap groups. So you could position, let's say four different windows snapped into different positions. And let's say maybe something else comes up, you can then restore that group of snapped items. And that's a nice improvement over what was available in Windows 10. There's another new feature called pick up where you left off. And this is really beneficial if say you're using a laptop and you dock it to let's say a larger monitor. When you undock your laptop, your laptop windows will be shown in an optimal way. In the past, when you undocked, you then had to rearrange your windows on your laptop. And then when you redocked, you also had to optimize the way things looked. This promises to make that whole process even easier. Next, you also have something called the personalized feed and it's composed of different widgets. So you'll see things like the weather, news, sports scores, maybe stocks, all of that content will be pulled into this feed. And the promise is that it's optimized based on what you look at and what interests you. So over time, as you interact with it, in theory, it should get better. So is this a good addition? I'm not really sure. I think today most people go onto the web to access that type of content. But when you look at things like iOS and other platforms, they all tend to incorporate a feed. So I think it's really just Microsoft trying to catch up with what other platforms do. And I think overall, they're just trying to increase the relevance of Windows and trying to get more people to stay on the platform versus going elsewhere. Whether it'll be successful, I don't know, we'll have to see, but it's an interesting addition. The next big announcement, Windows also has virtual desktops. Basically, you can set up multiple desktops and you could have one set of apps open on one. So maybe you have your work desktop and then maybe you have another desktop for say school with a different set of apps open. You can also customize what the background looks like. Now, Microsoft has always had virtual desktops or at least in Windows 10. The big change now is you can now customize what the background looks like. Also, Microsoft is now putting it on the taskbar, so it makes the entry point even easier to find. Now, my guess is Microsoft Research probably found a lot of people requested this, and even though it already existed in Windows 10, most people just didn't know about it. So I think Microsoft went back, made some enhancements, invested a little bit more, and now they're gonna give it another try. 
The next biggest announcement has to do with performance, and this is one that I'm personally really excited about. Microsoft claims that everything across the board will just be faster. Windows updates will be 40% smaller, your updates will happen in the background, and your computer is now supposed to be more energy efficient. When I worked as a PM at Microsoft, if you had a list of 10 different features you could invest in, you could never go wrong by choosing the performance enhancements. Microsoft has also announced improvements to how you input into your computer. So voice, touch, pen, all of those have seen improvements. Now, Windows 10 supported these as well, but things have now gotten better. With your voice, when you talk to your computer in the past, you had to go back and add punctuation. Apparently, they can now do all of that for you. Also, when you use a pen as input on your computer, you now get haptic feedback. Now, of course, that'll probably also require some new hardware, but it's really neat seeing them invest in better ways of inputting into your computer. Microsoft also announced now that they're going to be integrating Microsoft Teams directly into Windows. Throughout the pandemic, Microsoft Teams has been a very bright spot for Microsoft. The app has seen a tremendous amount of growth. And when we look at Windows 10, Windows 10 had Skype integrated with it. Now, Skype used to be the de facto way for messaging, but then for whatever reason, it kind of lost its luster. Now, when you think of messaging, you think of Messenger or FaceTime or WhatsApp. No one ever really thinks of Skype anymore. So I think by including Teams directly into Windows, this is Microsoft saying, hey, we believe we have a product that works really well. Let's reset our strategy on communication and see if we could turn things around by including Teams. Let's now shift gears and talk about how gaming will be better on Windows 11. First off, there's something called Auto HDR or High Dynamic Range. What does that mean? Well, your games will simply look better. The colors will be more vibrant. Also, back to the earlier point on performance, performance has been improved greatly also for gaming. Your games will launch faster. There's also something called direct storage, where instead of going through the CPU, it'll connect directly to the GPU, so you remove some of those bottlenecks. All in all, your gaming experience should simply be faster. <music> Lastly, Microsoft also announced a completely revamped Microsoft Store. Now, the Microsoft Store has somewhat struggled in the past. Whenever you go to the store, you can't really find many quality apps within the store and Microsoft is now hoping to change that. You can now submit all types of apps. You could submit Win32, UWP, PWA, and even now Android apps. That's one of the biggest changes. So now you can run many more apps on Windows directly. Say for example, TikTok. Microsoft also announced that if you're a developer, you can use your own commerce platform. So what does that mean? Well, let's say I sell on the Microsoft store, I could process all of the transactions on my own and Microsoft won't take a cut at it. Now that's really kind of pointing their finger at Apple who takes a 30% cut of all sales that originate from their store. So why is Microsoft being so altruistic? Well, let's just say that very few people use the Microsoft store, so you don't really have much to lose. Instead, Microsoft wants to attract more developers and get more people on their platform, and hey, I'm sure they'll figure out ways to make money down the road. So what are my thoughts of all of these announcements? Well, when you look at all of this, there's quite a bit of innovation, but it's really more iterative compared to Windows 10. And I think Microsoft is taking a more measured approach. When you look at Windows 7 to Windows 8, that was a drastic departure from what Windows 7 was, and Microsoft got a lot of negative feedback and blowback from that. So I think they intentionally tried to keep it as familiar as possible while also innovating on it. So when is Windows 11 coming out? Well, my best guess is they're either going to try to align it with back to school, which is in September, or they'll aim for holiday 2021. But my guess is it'll become available this year. Also, will it be a free upgrade? Well, when we look back at Windows 10, Windows 10 was a free upgrade, and I see no reason why Windows 11 would be any different. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.